Today I'm going to be making sourdough challah bread. Get the same fluffy results using sourdough. Hi, I'm Jenny from Cozy Kitchen and welcome to the Living Bread series. Um, and so today I'm going to be making sourdough challah bread. And um, the reason why I made it was that on this past weekend we got this really cool opportunity that just was this incredible, just, I mean, it was definitely like one of those cool encounters that you can't plan out. But we were in the Bay Area and by we happened to stumble upon this really cool kind of small kosher bakery. And as we walked in, we were right in the kitchen. And we were in the kitchen and they were making challah bread. We got samples of cookies. And my son and I even got to practice making the challah bread. And what we ate it on the way home, we bought some bread and we ate it on the way home. And it was this just beautiful texture, really light and airy. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I was able to make a sourdough version of the challah bread? And so that's what I did. And so that's what I'll be walking you through today. And, um, you know, it was a really cool process to see that I could get the same fluffy results using sourdough. But one thing I noticed when when we were making the, um, the challah was that when at the bakery, every time they made a loaf, they would take two pe two rolls and they would over overlap them and in into the shape of a cross. And so that really stood out to me that here it was like, you know, every time they're making the challah bread, it was in the shape of a cross. And the challah bread, if you don't know, um, is often a symbol of, of love or of peace. And I thought, so I thought, what a beautiful picture of how, you know, Jesus wasn't quite the Messiah that that we was expected. Um, he was the suffering servant. Isaiah 53 talks about how he would be would suffer for our sins, how he'd be rejected by um, by his people, and um, and how the cross and his coming, his death and resurrection. He wasn't coming to bring a institutional peace. He wasn't coming to bring um, a peace from a government system or from for anything in, in the external. He was coming to b bring um, peace between God and man. And that's what the cross did. And so real, how amazing that picture of, of the cross being made into this beautiful loaf that would be life-giving, into this bread that was a symbol for peace. That the cross, um, Jesus' death and resurrection brings peace between God and man. And when there's that peace between God and man, then man is able to, to live at peace through, through, through Jesus with each other. And so I just thought that was a really beautiful picture that really stood out to me as we were enjoying that bread and as we were making it and just um, how, you know, bread is all through the Bible. And that's something we talk about on the Living, Living Bread series. So how I made this sourdough loaf was that um, first I make the starter overnight, let that sit and ferment overnight. And then when it's ready, the next day um, you make the sweet, the sweet dough. And so we make the dough with um, flour, or first you, you make the wet, but you don't, don't add the flour yet, but you start with, you start the wet dough or the sweet dough with oil, um, eggs. Um, I use, uh, you can use a, either use sugar or honey. Uh, my best results I, so far have been with sugar. Um, and then you add in the, um, some warm water and you add the flour. And so you mix this dough, it's really sticky and this thick dough. And then you take that, remove that from the bowl and put it on a floured surface. And then you're gonna take that starter from that you, you've had rising overnight and you actually are gonna knead that into the dough. You don't think that it's gonna to come together that um, how thick they are, the starter and the sweet, the sweet dough, but eventually after a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of kneading them together, they um, become one dough all together. And so all that leaven um, just goes through the whole of the sweet dough. We cleaned out the bowl, the bowl to put that, to put the dough in the bowl to, to rise for about two hours. After the dough rose for two hours, it was time for the shaping. And so my son got to help me with that part. And again, it was just really special how um, we got to make that sign of the cross and then roll them into the into the loaves. And the key to having the fluffy bread um, is a lot of times you're, what you're trying to do to get your bread to be fluffy is you're trying to incorporate air. So the two things you need to have in order to have enough air in your in your bread, um, one is water, so you need, you need your, your, your dough to be well hydrated. You don't want to have too much flour. You don't want it to be too dry. Otherwise, it's not going to get... Because all, all that water actually works to it, during the baking process it creates bubbles and it creates this fluffy um, dough and you also want to incorporate um, air either trap the air or incorporate it 
as you're shaping it. And so the way that we did that in the challah bread, we did something a little unique, um, but we took the pieces that were gonna be used um, for the plates or the for the braiding, and we rolled them out thin. So it was like this very, you know, long skinny rectangle is what you're trying to get to. And then you roll that up. So as you're rolling it up, long ways into a long, um, a long tube, you have all that air incorporated in that spiral. And so um, that's how we get more air in there. And we also, um, sometimes they get a little chunky, the, the gluten and in, in, um, in the flour and dough will try to contract. So we sometimes we'd shake it out to help them elongate. So you braid that together, you form a sign of a cross, and then you kind of fold it into a boomerang. And then you, you do a process, as you can see, of, of braiding it together and then tucking the ends under. And that's gonna proof for at least five hours if you want it to get to about triple in size. Um, I did it on a parchment sheet. And then when it's about time for baking, we preheat the oven at 350 degrees. And to make sure that I had the optimal environment for, this, for the bread to get a lot of good spring as it was baking, I used a baking stone um, to kind of help with that, creating that, that consistent environment. So I put the baking stone in, I preheated that. And then underneath the baking stone on the lower rack, I had a um, jelly roll pan that I filled with water. And I let those two things preheat for about 10 minutes. And that helps get the environment, get really warm, ready to bake the bread without causing some shock of a cold pan or anything like that. And consistent heat through the baking stone as well as a nice um, steamy environment. Because the steam in the oven will help to, the, to get a good, um, to help add more spring to the bread and just help it develop well. Before the loaves go into the oven, did a light egg wash with one egg scrambled with a little bit of water, about a teaspoon of water, and just lightly spread that on. And then I chose to put sesame seeds on them. And then I transferred the bread onto the baking stone with the parchment still under it so it doesn't stick. And then that bakes for, um, I did 25 minutes, and then after 25 minutes, I removed the pan of water and I baked it for about 10 minutes longer. So you're looking for that golden brown, um, you're looking for that golden brown color. Um, and so after that bakes, it'll become this beautiful loaf and it has a beautiful spring to it, a really great texture in it, and it doesn't taste like a sourdough bread, it tastes like a sweet, a sweet bread. Um, and so that's the process. So I hope that you enjoy making the challah bread. And I, and um, and my hope and my prayer for you is that as you're making it, that you take time to think about the cross and what it means, and and that sense of of peace. Um, and and also, hopefully, you get the chance to make it with people you, that you love, like I got to make it with my son. Um, so as we close this time of baking um, for the lip for and talking about living bread, uh, I'm gonna pray for pray for you, dear Heavenly Father. I'm so thankful that that you love us so much that you came you came to make peace between you and us because you knew that that there was nothing that we could do on our own that could alleviate just that burden of sin that's on us and so I'm so thankful that Jesus that you came you died um, to take away the power of sin but that you rose again to show to show how how you are you can triumph over the grave. Um, I pray that you'd help us to have just a sense of hope and of expectation um, for this spring as we look ahead. And um, just thank you for your presence in our lives. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful.